Hi, hello, and welcome everybody again, online, offline, people watching us uh, on the live stream, in the recording, but most importantly, almost 80 participants that have gathered today on Zoom uh, with us to follow the new edition of ID Talks. My name is Anna, and I'm the facilitator of ID Talks. We are coming back for the fourth season now um, under a new motto of um, shaping inclusion and diversity. This time uh, for us, it's very important to bring in uh, speakers and share practices that really allow us to practice what we preach and to shape it together and to mainstream it within our organizations and beyond. I would like to introduce also my teammates, my colleagues, uh, Maria from Salto Inclusion and Diversity Resource Centers, that is the organization behind the ID Talks. Maria, if you would like to say a few words, uh, please. Hi and welcome. We are really happy to see some of the familiar faces from previous editions of ID Talks today with us and also many new faces. We are with a lot of people today. So I'm really happy that we are going to work on shaping inclusion and diversity in Erasmus Plus and European Solidarity Corps programs together. Um, that's the motto this year, and I think that also um, tells you a bit that uh, highlight of uh, this one and next four webinars actually will be on inclusion and diversity in the programs. So how we communicate about the possibilities, how we can improve some features of the program, how we can develop our own ID strategies. So those are some of the things we will look into together with you and some really uh, inspirational speakers we have got on board for this edition. So I would just say, yeah, enjoy the experience and yeah, engage, ask questions in chat and later on in the, in the group. So have fun. Thank you very much, Maria, for this introduction. Also here with us is Enrique from Salto Inclusion and Diversity that's help is helping us to prepare for Salto, for the ID Talks, as well as Olaja, as we like to call the most creative in our team. Olaja will be recording, graphically recording uh, today's ID Talk that we will be able to see at the end of the webinar. ID Talks are independently organized 90 minute long uh, webinars that we started still in the autumn of 2020, one of the pioneers of this format. And it's happening every second Wednesday at 1 p.m. Central European time. Today we are kicking off the new season, so four more editions are coming. The first uh, ID talk of this series of uh, shaping inclusion and diversity is entitled ID Talks Strategy, and we will be focusing today on ID roadmaps and um, as a follow up to the European Commission's inclusion and diversity uh, strategy. Mm. ID roadmaps is an interesting complex process that is already uh, kicked since last year, and we are very privileged to have with us our two speakers that will uh, introduce you the concept, introduce you uh, how to bring in inclusion and diversity strategy to your organizations within programs and beyond. So our speakers today are Susie Nicodemi, the ID Roadmaps Coordinator. She comes from the practice field of youth work, of international youth work, with a lot of background in policy making and research. Uh, she is based in England with her family and brings her the European values to her community through her everyday work. And uh, supporting Susie today from the institutional actors is Tony uh, Guedes. I am, uh, of course, mispronouncing your last name, Tony, an Inclusion and Diversity Salto Resource Center officer that is working there already for 20 years. And he's currently coordinating the strategic partnership for inclusion between 18 Erasmus Plus and European Solidarity Core national agencies and making the mobility taster for inclusion happen. So dear guests, dear guest speakers, you now have the floor. And before you take the floor, I would like to just uh, 
encourage our participants to be active, to ask their questions, to put their comments in the chat box. Uh, and uh, yeah, we will be very happy to bring those to the attention of our speakers after their short input. Thank you very much, Anna, and hello, everybody. Um, thank you for the great introduction. So my name is Susie, and I've been involved in the IED roadmap for um, about a year now, uh, working together with Tony um, from Salto Inclusion and Diversity. So my role in the roadmap was to help make it happen in a few different directions. And um, I will be uh, explaining some of it today and talking with you and um, together about how you can use it and how it could be um, a potential uh, wonderful resource for your work and your local action. Uh, good evening. I'm sorry I'm late. I am from Patras, Greece. I'm Ivan Vaka. Uh, nice to meet you all. And thank you for inviting me in such an interesting um online event thank you no no worries thank uh, you very I'm much I came late. Yeah. i'm sorry i just came That's from okay. my school <laughs> and i was running uh, yeah. sorry i want to ask you uh, the coordinators are susie and tony yes we yes the just started the presentation today yeah are tony from, and susie. from which country please um Jenna. we will put all the information in the chat if it is possible for now we would like to focus on the presentation by susie and tony you. if you have questions please write them in the chat and one of the team will definitely follow up on them in the end we will definitely give all our participants a chance to also share their experience and bring their questions to the attention of us and our speakers yeah. So also from my side, uh, super uh, to see so many of you, uh, no matter if you're a little bit late, that's okay. Um, also, we are recorded, so uh, also your colleagues later can uh, still uh, see it. Uh, what I want to say is, uh, so my name is Tony uh, Hürdens. I, I had the, the privilege to work with uh, Susie on uh, one of the tools that hopefully will make it easier for you to work strategically on inclusion and diversity. So I've, I've been with uh, Salto Inclusion since the start in 2000. Uh, so in all those years, there were many, many challenges that we wanted to address. So hopefully we can share that experience uh, with you. And we did that with a practical tool that we will explain to you. Susie. Thanks, Tony. So um, the emphasis today, as has been uh, introduced already a little bit, um, is about inclusion and diversity. It's about strategies, that big S word, and it's about understanding new tools and ways, that, um, tools that can help you find your way. So, um, we're going to uh, tell you a little bit the story and invite you to join on a journey with us once upon a time. So we want to make sure that you're sitting comfortably and uh, hopefully you've all got a drink and maybe a snack and uh, some people like to have something for their feet or something to, to squeeze in their hands. Take a breath, relax. Tony and Suni, Susie will take you on a, a bit of a journey now to explain some things that have happened and how things have developed and then to look a little bit about how you can use things and make things different and better. At the very beginning, once upon a time, in a town somewhere near you, there's probably a young person, something like this, like this group here or, the, or this boy here with a basketball. And we want to make sure that we keep in mind the young people, our target group, when we're talking about um, all these um, big things behind all the all the, the Excel sheets and the meetings and the strategies and the discussions like this one, um, the people in little rectangles um, behind all the activities and the European projects and the programs, there are real people and um, there are young people out there who want to get involved. And um, the aim of everything that we're talking about today is to try to reach out to more and different young people, just like this one that you see in the picture. Our focus is also on youth work. Um, and uh, as you know, this is all kind of learning through doing and non-formal education and a lot of interaction. And we would like to encourage you to journey this input together with us. 
Um, so we would ask you, if you can, to try to find um, either a second tab on your, on your, if you're using a laptop or a computer, um, or maybe it's easier for you to use a phone. That, that's also okay. And we would ask you to join us on uh, a little bit of an interactive uh, journey. And we will be using Mentimeter today during our presentation. So we'd ask you to go to menti.com. You put that in either on your phone or in your browser. And the code you need is 11289546. 11289546. I think someone's also putting it in the chat for you. So if you get lost, have a look at the chat and follow the instructions. Nothing, it doesn't matter if, uh, if things are too confusing and everything, it's okay, nothing is mandatory. It's just to kind of keep you involved and to try to keep the journey that we're explaining, keep it together. Okay, and great, that's wonderful. Once you get there, if you could uh, choose your little symbol, how do you feel today? Are you a thumbs up? Are you a pussycat? Uh, is something coming from the heart? And that will help us. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Coming on. Great. So what we're going to do is ask you to keep that open through our presentation. We will come backwards and forwards to Mentimeter um, a couple of times. So I can see people joining. I can see some nice uh, little emojis coming up. So the first thing I'm going to ask you is, um, could you please tell us where are you today? Where are you today. Wonderful. Great. Oh, we might have to do something with the colours afterwards. It's gone all, it's wonderfully designed, but then that means it matches really well with the thing behind. But uh, we might have to change a little bit the colours to be able to read it. Okay, we've got a lot of people from Spain. That's great. Actually, I'm in Spain today and what a beautiful country it is. Um, I'm in Andalusia on holiday with my, with my family, although normally I'm, I'm from the UK. Um, and yeah, the, so the, most of you would, would know this, I guess, but the bigger the, the word, um, the, the more people have, have written it. Um, so we can see there's also quite a few people from, let me see, what, what's the other big words? So Poland is in there. Um, Italy. Italy, yes, I can see that too. Great. Um, yeah, and what's quite interesting is some people have gone for their kind of national um, position others have gone more for their town or their region or um yeah that's great and i can see people from all over the place a lot of people from different uh, uh european countries somebody sitting on their balcony which is great to read um sometimes location can be huge and sometimes it can be very specific right um that's wonderful and what a great diverse group we are so Hopefully most of you understand uh, Mentimeter already. If for you it's your first time, hopefully you understand now that you can use your device to give a response and it would come on the screen and everybody can um, have a shared approach to the conversation. Okay, so the topic today, the topic that we're, that we're um, focusing on is about strategy. And I would like to know, what's your first reaction? to that word, strategy. What's your first reaction? How does it make you feel? What emotions do you have? What experiences does it connect to? What's your reaction to strategy? Okay, great. So if you could put your words and now we're gonna get a a bit of an image and an understanding of different people's reactions and experiences. So plan seems to be the main one here, Tony. I'm, I'm looking, uh, I can see it's a bigger one than others. Yeah. It's, a, it's a dancing picture, which makes it hard to read, <laughs> read the words. There's lots of, lots of responses from you, which is great. I can see things about tool, about goal, I can also see some, some um, <clears throat> experiences and reactions which might not be so, so positive. I can see a little bit of blah, blah. I can see a little bit of, um, I saw it a minute ago, now it's moved. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, it is so difficult, says somebody. Others see it as a, as a framework, a way to solve a problem, uh, and a, a systematic approach for action. Some people say they are bored by them. Some people say it helps with sensible decisions. Great. Okay. So we're getting into this concept of strategy, thinking about what you've done before and how it makes you feel. For some people, strategy makes them feel a bit like this. For some people, when they think about strategies, they say, yeah, but it takes so much time and it, it costs loads of money and it kind of restricts me and it gives me this like concrete framework that I have to work within. I don't have any flexibility and, and it's for experts, right? People that are really good with all those Gantt chart things and all these like amazing complicated stuff you're supposed to do on Excel, right? It's all really, really hard making a strategy. But let me tell you a secret. A strategy isn't always a scary thing. In fact, the dictionary says, just as some of you have mentioned here, a dictionary says that a strategy is a plan of action that's designed to achieve a long-term or overall aim. It's a plan of action, just as many of you have said. And in one of the Salto publications, the Inclusion by Design publication, which is really helpful, actually, it's really easily written, it's very accessible, it's a really good resource to use. It explains strategy as a statement of intent. So you think about, where am I now? Where do I want to go? And what's the steps I need to take to get there? Right? That's a strategy. We can do this. Hopefully we can help some of you move away from this feeling to, <laughs> to, to some different ones. So a strategy is all about different options and choices. Not, no one is able to keep all the balls bouncing all the time. Well, except for this lady who is amazingly. If anyone can do this, I'll be really, really impressed, especially balancing on a skateboard at the same time. And it's not even a skateboard, it's one of those um, circus things. Um, so strategies, yeah, they're about choosing. It's about reflecting. So what do we do? What do we do well? And what's our starting point? What's our baseline? And then where do we want to go? And what's the priorities for getting there? And what impact do we want to have to get there? And But not only about the, the aim um, and the task focus, but also about the process. Like, how are we going to get there? What's the way that we work to get there? And what can we do on that process to make ourselves more inclusive and diverse in the way we do things as well. So it's about planning things and it's about implementing them, but remember also the whole evaluation cycle to improve stuff, right? Um, so it's not just linear, it can also be a cyclical thing, a strategy. And it doesn't have to be great, big, confusing, huge 400 page documents with all those complicated tools and 10 year plans. You can break it down. You can make it achievable. You can make it bite-sized and digestible. You can make your, your different steps measurable. Every journey starts with one step, okay? So think about your journey and think about each step that you would make. And hopefully strategies can start to become your friend. They can help you make choices. They can actually save time, save money and save effort. And a strategy and an approach is a good thing. I promise. What's good and what's helpful is that there are loads of resources and possibilities out there to help you to be more inclusive and more diverse in your youth work, in your international projects and within the European programmes. There are a plethora, I love that word, a plethora of um, tools, websites, apps, publications, resources, all sorts of things out there that can help you, no matter your learning style, no matter what you, what you, the ways you like to learn and do stuff, there's all sorts out there that can help you. And Salto's job actually is to kind of make a logic of them and to collate them and help support you in doing that. And Tony's going to explain a little bit from the Salto perspective about that. Indeed. Um, 
to pull things together. That's a little bit what we wanted to do. But before we go there, I would like to zoom out a little bit. Um, so uh, so we, we have developed this tool to make inclusion and diversity, hopefully, a reality in your work. Um, but let's get a step back first. So um, in Europe, one of the basic values is social inclusion. Yeah, there are always this talk about inclusion, social cohesion. The point is we should not leave anyone behind. That also means in European programs, EU funding programs like Erasmus Plus and Solidarity Corps that we're working in, um, they should be open to all. Yeah, we should not exclude uh, young people. It should be transparent because basically we're using taxpayers' money. Yeah, it should be equal treatment. Yeah, no favoritism because you know someone, etc. But and that's then the next slide, Susie. <laughs> We know from our experience that not all young people have the same starting point. Yeah, people are different. So if we really want to apply these uh, programs completely the same way, I bet that some of these animals are not going to make it into the tree. Yeah, and that's a little bit similar also in uh, our program. So fairness is not the same as equal treatment. Yeah, if we will apply 100% the same rules for our programs, um, we most likely will not reach certain target groups. Next slide, Susie. So that's why it's uh, quite special that in the current programs, uh, the Erasmus Plus and the Solidarity Corps, in the legal basis, so for the first time, um, it mentions that we should do special efforts to include young people with fewer opportunities. Before there was already uh, um, some mention of uh, social cohesion and we should be open for all, etc. But not that actually we should do what you see there on the uh, picture. Some young people to have um, access to our opportunities, they need maybe an extra box. And maybe some people, um, they don't need a box. Yeah. So in the legal basis, it basically says that um, we need to do something yeah, to really get everybody on board. So it is said that uh, the European Commission, they should create a framework to make this inclusion and diversity in those programs possible. Um, and they are invited to make uh, action plans to reach out to specific groups, etc. Also within those uh, programs and the, the project, there should be special financial support and other support for young people with fewer opportunities. And at the end of it, we should monitor all our efforts. So if inclusion and diversity is so important, we should also measure it and make sure that we're getting somewhere. So basically, the legal basis, basis that we are talking about are the green light that we should be working on inclusion and diversity. Or more, it's actually the obligation, because that's the law, the legal basis that has been voted by um, our ministers and our parliamentarians. Susie? Yeah. So how do we get there? So the, the first thing that was mentioned in this legal basis of the programs is that the European Commission should create a frame. So there's an ID framework and that has been translated into these implementation guidelines or how we call it is the inclusion and diversity strategy for those two programs, Erasmus Plus and European Solidarity Corps. Now, what is in there? Uh, so it's a European level document and it actually defines who we are talking about. Yeah, when we talk about people with fewer opportunities or in the youth sector, young people with fewer opportunities, who are they? And the nice thing is actually that that uh, definition um, has already been developed and going around in the youth work field since 2003, yeah, when we created already a, a, an inclusion strategy for the youth field. So actually it's nice that now it is spread out throughout the whole Erasmus Plus program, where there's also our colleagues from adult education, from um, uh, formal education, uh, vocational training, etc. The nice thing about the definition is also that it's an open definition. So it just specifies what are the obstacles that people are facing and why would they be at disadvantage. And that also um, enables us to address new topics that might come up. 
yeah so um if the definition would not be open and we would just say like okay let's focus on drug addicts and what if then gaming or social media becomes an addiction yeah so thanks to this open definition we can then uh jump on that as well um what else is in this strategy it describes all kind of program mechanisms yeah um features of those two uh programs that hopefully make it easier to get young people with fewer opportunities on board but it's through adapted project formats but it's through special funding for inclusion but it's for uh through extra support of national agencies and also it details a little bit like okay how should a good project a good inclusion and diversity project look like yeah that it should be sustainable that it uh, is based on solid partnerships um that it's it's a whole process that starts before goes on during but it also continues after etc so that's basically put in this framework that the commission has made now maybe just a little bit of interaction before uh, we move on um, another mentee susie so our question to you have you heard about this european inclusion and diversity strategy for the two programs so again just go to your phone or if it's still open menti.com put the code and the options are nope never heard of it I uh, might have seen it somewhere yeah I've had a quick look and then probably put it aside or yeah I actually used some parts of it or applied some parts of it Super, thanks for voting. Great, it's great to see. Um, there's actually quite an equal spread going on here and a good number of people that have heard of it a bit or, or had a quick look or even read it and actually used it. So that's great. Um, and we hope for the people that have never heard of it, we hope that this, um, we will put the link in the chat for you and um, we hope you'll be able to go and search and, and find it. <laughs> yeah, I saw Maria just uh, posted the link already, uh, so super. Great. Okay, so this is a interesting document. It gives us the frame. So the legal basis gives us the green light. Yes, we should work on it. Commission creates a frame to work on it within these two programs. But then if we can go on, Susie, with the next slide. But this um, <clears throat> inclusion and diversity strategy is for all the sectors of Erasmus Plus. So also for universities, also for adult education, also for vocational training. So then the question is, how do we bring it down to our national level? So from this European to our national level, and also how to bring it from this general recommendations or this general framework to something specific for youth that most of us are uh, working in yeah um so we wanted to create a practical tool for the youth work sector yeah uh, to reach more inclusion and diversity on the blue horizon as you can see on the picture there however it's also probably not a single road to get there there's different ways probably to reach that and also unlike on the picture, it's probably not one person walking that road. In, or, in order to make it happen, we probably need to have all stakeholders involved, going from the grassroots levels to the beneficiaries of the programs, but also your uh, youth work managers or organization managers, also the inclusion and diversity networks that you might have in your, your country, um, national agencies, maybe SALTO, maybe the European Commission as well. Only when we do it together, then we will get uh, probably somewhere and yes we need you for that susie thanks tony so yeah the need was expressed we we would like to translate this this great aim this horizon that we have to reach towards and we want to um translate it into um a practical tool something accessible adaptable intuitive um, and that's where I got on board to work together with Tony and the others in, in Salto and a lot of other people to co-create something. 
Um, lots of different needs and different voices were heard through all sorts of different ways, through um, surveys and online meetings and events and, and feedback groups and uh, workshops and seminar things, all different things that we had between June and December last year. Um, and we had national agencies and individual experts and representatives from networks and different youth organizations from all different types of sectors and all different kinds of countries. And we wanted to make sure that, um, that what we made was made by the field for the field. We wanted to make sure that the words that were used were recognized and accessible. And also we wanted to have some kind of tool, uh, some kind of way um, so that people could use it for different kinds of needs in, in, in different, um, different situations for different, different needs, right? Um, and this is where my mind was blown <laughs> because I found out about interactive PDFs. Maybe you already know about interactive PDFs, but for me, this was one of the highlights of 2021. Um, so the, um, it's not a website, it's not a booklet, it's like a thing in between, and it can do all sorts of stuff. And we worked with a great company in Belgium called Stardust that helped us with the design and all the clever interlinking stuff. Um, and Olaja, who's also here today, she, she really helped with um, translating some of the visual conceptual stuff um, connected to the words. So her expertise really made a difference as well. And um, what we did is we, we gathered together all these different ideas from different corners of the different fields. And uh, we made a logic and we collected it under a few headings um, for people to use in this interactive PDF. And this is what we have. Et voila, the ID roadmap. So um, using roadmap as a metaphor for people on their journey to help them find their way, just as many of, many of you put in the, in the word cloud a minute ago, um, there are lots of people um, who would have different roads or different needs. And the idea is that this would give you a kind of uh, a map, a route to follow, um, some kind of tool or guidance. Um, and it's, uh, it's made by and for the people in the international youth work field related to the European youth programs. That's our frame and that's our limit that we were working within. But if it's useful for others in other places, in other ways, that's great, wonderful. We're really happy it's transferable or adaptable also, also for others. Um, it does have different entry points. Um, you can access it from all sorts of different places um, um, according to your need. And we all know um, that, that we're all equal in this world, right? Um, although some people seem maybe more equal than others. Um, so it does depend on your reality, on your resources, on the power you have, or your, even your national laws, how able you are to change things. So we realize that it would be very different for people in different contexts. So we're hoping um, that the approach of the roadmap allows many different entry points and many different depths and opportunity for impact for all sorts of different people. And it's not only about changing, we know that change starts with yourself and change starts at home, right? You know all those things, you've been to all those and read all those books. Um, and, but it's not only about individuals making a change, um, it's, uh, uh, it's also about the idea, as Tony is explaining, stakeholders working together um, and combining the power and the possibilities that different people can do and thinking also about what could happen first and what should happen next. So Tony's just going to explain quite quickly the different functions of the ID roadmap. Yes, uh, thank you, Susie. Yeah, you see my screen? Yep, it's great. Voila, perfect. So as Susie said, in all our consultations with the field, we thought, okay, what needs to happen in order to have more and better inclusion and diversity in those programs? And distilling from all the input that we got, we have five roads or five destinations. If inclusion and diversity needs to be better in our programs, yeah, then we have to work on these. And as we have, uh, uh, mentioned already, we thought the metaphor of a road getting somewhere uh, would be good. So in this interactive PDF, you can see the different destinations of the different roads. Yeah? So for better inclusion diversity, you need to increase commitment and buy-in. Yeah? You can also see it here on the side. We need to have active outreach, 
reduce the barriers if there are, maximize the impact if you're doing any way or uh, project, so why not have as much result as possible, and then make it a, a daily concern, yeah, inclusion and diversity, something that is part of all the things we do. And in order to get those destinations, you will see here there's different milestones. Yeah? For example, uh, the first uh, road is heading for increasing commitment and buy-in. How do you do that? A first step would be you need to know why. Yeah? What could be the arguments that actually show everybody involved or everybody that we want to be involved that, hey, working with young people with fewer opportunities, it is uh, a good thing. It's important we should be doing that. Yeah? So that needs to be developed, for example. A next step would then be, okay, if it's important, maybe everybody should have the awareness about it. Yeah, so that would be a next step, all the stakeholders involved. And then the next step is, okay, it's not only about thinking, oh, it's a good thing, but then also hopefully providing the next uh, step as in action. How do you turn this commitment, this awareness into action that they really uh, make a change. So and that's how it works for the different uh, roads, like maximizing impact as well. The thing with the interactive PDF is there's lots of things popping up when you hover it, but you can also click, yeah? So here, for example, if you click through, you go to the next page, yeah? Um, and there you see, again, the, the different uh, um, milestones more in detail. And when you click through to them, you can see different possible actions, okay? If visibility and recognition of the benefits of this experience is important to reach as much influence or impact as possible, how do you do that? There's a few suggestions like, okay, you can recognize participants learning, voila, and when you click it, it opens and it gives you different ways you can do that. Yeah, document the people's learning outcome, yeah, um, use recognition tool, tools for that, have campaigns, etc. And then also what would be the outcomes of that. The nice thing is that you can also add your own notes there. So in case you're working in your organization and you want to um, use this tool to zoom in on specific actions you want to be doing, you can uh, put uh, more information uh, there. Voila, close it. Um, and that's basically how it works. If you have other actions, uh, because we only based ourselves on the inventory that we did with uh, the fields, but there could be more creative actions, etc. You can also add them here. I'm just doing quickly, blah blah blah. Voila. And that's how you can uh, navigate uh, through it. Yeah. You can also put some check marks in case you say like, oh, these are the ones we really want to address with our organization. Okay, back to the start. What else is in here? If you want to read a little bit more about the backgrounds, you have the about, where does it come from? What uh, does it say? What I just explained, how you use it, what are the different buttons, etc. And this is maybe also a very useful one, is an overview. This is basically the whole inventory of things we should be doing. We, I mean, all the stakeholders involved to make inclusion and diversity better. So the next step would be that you with your organization or we in Salto, we think like, okay, this is probably something good for us, or this is something we should address. And that is how you can start composing a little bit your uh, focus of your uh, strategic work. Voila. You can also uh, print this off or uh, on the website, you have uh, different views in case you are not so much into interactive PDFs, but you want to just uh, print it and have it as a handout. Uh, it is also uh, possible uh, there. I'll share the link uh, later. Well, now that's just to show you a little bit how it works and important as well. You'll probably notice when you uh, play around with it a little bit that some things are probably not for you. Yeah, making, I don't know, the program more accessible or the program tools more accessible. Fine, yes, NGOs probably cannot do that because it's the commission who has the, uh, the program uh, tools, they manage it, etc. However, what you, what we can do is then make sure that the right people know 
that it could be improved in order to have more and better inclusion and diversity. So it doesn't mean that you have to do everything yourself. You can also take it on board to make sure that other people uh, do things. And that's a little bit the whole idea behind the tool. Voila, I stop sharing and I give back to Susie. Thanks, Tony. That's great. So, <clears throat> I'm just uh, doing the visuals here. Okay, so we have this proposed roadmap from, as Tony said, what we collated during our six month process last year. Uh, there is a lot more, and I'm sure you have a lot more ideas and, and um, uh, creativity and suggestions that could also go in it. Okay, we're hoping it's a first step and a support tool for all sorts of different place, people in different places across Europe to help them for more inclusion and diversity. There are also many different ways that you could use this roadmap, all sorts of different ways. And different people have different learning styles and you have different organizations, you have different amounts of money, you have all sorts of um, uh, options and, and paths you could take um, to do your own inclusion diversity strategy. So one way of using the ID roadmap is uh, as a common tool, as, a, as some common ground to gather stakeholders around and um, to discuss it and use it together as a, as a framework to help the discussion between different stakeholders in different places with different amounts of power and different amounts of money, okay? You could also use it as a checklist. Um, quite a few um, options on the, on the roadmap give you the, the tick uh, the tick box checklist options. Uh, each of the actions has got one and you could use it to define the things that you're aiming for, or you could use it to show achievement even once uh, actions have been uh, uh, reached and, and done. And as Tony said, the overview also has all the tick boxes as well. So if you're a tick box person, this tool is for you. Um, you can use it as a reflection aid. So you could consider, right, what are we already pretty good at? in uh, myself, in my own competence, or in my organization, or even in my country, like, what do we do really well already? And what are our weak areas? Or where could we improve a little bit? Like, what don't we do much of yet? So hopefully, the full picture will help you consider a little bit, and some self reflection, um, of kind of scoring yourself, even like, uh, what are you good at? Um, but maybe also having some external perspective on that. What do other people say? You as a person or your organization, what do they think you're good at? And where do they think that maybe you could do a little bit more of? So this whole kind of reaching out to the community or, or connecting more to others, the ID roadmap could help with that too. You can use it for ID storage with the little note boxes. You can um, like put in your thoughts, your ambitions, your ideas, your creativity, yeah. You can use it to weigh up choices, apples and oranges. You can, you can think, okay, what's our priorities here? What's really possible to achieve? What's, yeah, where is it falling here? Where should we really go for? Um, because aiming for everything is aiming for nothing, right? You've got to make choices. You can use it um, as one tool amongst others, right? I'm sure you've already got quite a few other resources and kind of networks and people and other things. And you could think, okay, how can I take this new one and where would it fit? Like, which things does it connect to? Maybe even now as you're thinking and listening, you think, ah, okay, that kind of connects a little bit to what my organization did last year already or something like this. So think how it can hook or plug or connect or grow from other things that you've already got. You can use it also as a starting point, right? You can have it, right? Let's take this and start with it and then build, go further, go wider, go, go different, have other roads, other milestones, other actions, which are more pertinent to your, um, your target group or the type of projects you do, or um, yeah, what, what, what you try to change with the needs in your community, that kind of stuff. Um, and you can, you can build on it. You can add your own actions to the different milestones. Because it's um, an interactive PDF, oh, I really love interactive PDF. Because it's one of those, you can actually use it as an online document. You can upload it to the cloud, whether you're a Google Drive, OneDrive, whatever your preference is, and you can work in teams. So when you're doing international projects or, or with people, other people in your network or organization in other towns or countries, you can have this document online and you can share it and work on it together. 
so you can add your own notes and you can add your have like a one common one online um, and you can use it also um, in a similar way that the that the programs aim to be we're well, starting with kind of simpler projects where young people start to get a taster of what it means to be in a group or do something international and then build up to more complicated project types of eventually you might be, <laughs> apply for a, a key action too in something um, so um, this whole scale that the programs aim for Hopefully the ID roadmap can also be like this. Um, you could take a corner, you could take one or two, as I taught before, these digestible, uh, um, achievable steps. Um, take one or two, start with that and um, celebrate when you make an achievement. Don't try and um, change. Do you remember that screenshot that Tony showed of the whole thing with all the tick boxes? You're not trying to change the world in a week, okay? Take what's possible, think about what you do already and try to do more of it. Um, uh, that, that you do really well, try to do more of that. And then think about areas you could improve or things you can weak, that are a bit weaker that you want to focus a bit more energy and resource on. Think about areas to lobby for, think about areas to work with others. The roadmap is um, a product of lots of people's ideas and contributions over the last six, eight months. It's not everything, but we hope it's gonna be a start of a journey, um, a start of a plan, the terrible S word, it's our friend now, right? The strategy that um, we can use for more inclusion and diversity in the European programs. Okay, so that was the ID roadmap. We're sure that you're probably like processing it a bit. You're probably even having a play with it, hopefully, if you're not checking your Facebook and your Instagram at the same time, uh, having a little play with it, seeing how the buttons work and where they take you. We'd like to just ask you one more question um, using the Mentimeter again. So get your phone or grab your other um, tab. So um, could you tell us, now that you've had a look at it and you've um, been introduced to it, and maybe you've even seen it a little bit before, we're curious to know, how could you use the ID roadmap? What ways are there for you to use? What could it connect to? Great. So some would use it for inspiration. Some would use it for more practical approaches of planning and defining, connecting to the organization strategy that already exists, right? Yeah, planning seems to be a key word. I'm liking the emoji. Sometimes there's just not words for the, for the picture that comes to your head, right? Awareness, raising awareness in people, um, in trainings, sharing it with others, that would be great. We'd be really happy if you could pass it on to others and spread it wider. As a way to review your own strategy. Um, that's quite an interesting one, Tony. What do you think? Uh, definitely. I, I think the, um, it gives a full picture. So it also uh, shows you where maybe there are still gaps. Yeah. So indeed, you might have thought about uh, certain things, for example, uh, creating more the, the buy-in or the, the reaching out to certain groups, but you never thought about applying it, um, inclusion and diversity, to your day-to-day -day work and the mainstreaming inclusion and diversity. How many of your staff is from different target groups, for example? So the nice thing with the ID roadmap is that it shows all those different facets, which maybe you did not think about. Uh, um, it's it's rolled off the screen a little bit now, but there was one about dissemination and sustainability, which I thought was quite interesting because the, um, it's true that a lot of the priorities of the European programs, I mean, they're based on reality, right? They, they come from need um, and um, to create the projects and the particular activities, uh, inclusion and diversity don't sit on their own in an ivory tower. They are connected to how you do projects and how those projects um, reach out to others and how they could be longer term and more sustainable and perhaps even have a more environmental impact. And uh, it, they're not on their own, inclusion and diversity. So this connection that you're making now with other aspects, is, I think that's quite interesting. Yeah. 
Great. So it could potentially be a great uh, tool for your inclusion and diversity work, whether it's for the planning, for the, the checking, for uh, diversifying, etc. But we don't just send it to you and that's it. There's also some other tools. Um, so uh, Susie, do you switch to the other slide? Some other tools that we wanted to share with you before rounding off. Yeah. I'll quickly paste it also in the uh, chat. So all the roadmap and the elements, whether it's the, the print uh, view or uh, whether it's the, the, there's a little poster as well, you can find it online. So all the things we talked about, uh, um, you can find here. We will still add some tools as well, because in the whole process, we asked from different uh, uh, stakeholders, do you know things that make um, strategic planning for inclusion and diversity easier? And we got lots of things back. So we are going to add them on the same page there, the roadmap uh, page, so that you can also use those. Um, I wanted also to um, mention the... Uh, Two, sorry, this went wrong. Two publications. Um, I'm looking at my colleagues to maybe add them. So uh, inclusion by design, we already mentioned uh, before. This is basically a little guide, practical guide, like how do you set up an inclusion and diversity strategy for NGOs? We had a similar publication for uh, our colleagues in the national agencies, uh, shaping inclusion and diversity. And we've updated that one. And I saw in the chat that someone said like, uh, um, don't you have that in a, an a online reader, et cetera. And indeed, uh, Shaping Inclusion and Diversity exists uh, online in this uh, uh, reader uh, thing. I'll quickly share it if that's okay. Hopla. Voila. So you could also just look at it online. And basically, it takes you through all the steps of um, how to make your own uh, strategy. Yeah. Link to that, because we are in uh, 2022, we also developed some podcasts. So in case people consume information more in an in audio way, um, so you can listen to podcasts on um, how to develop it. So the different steps that there are in your um in your development of the strategy uh, that you are thinking about yeah um on the planning um and then last but not least was this um uh youtube or it's um an input of uh, a consultant from finland sala sarinen who came to speak at a, a meeting of national agencies about the right mindset uh, for strategic planning yeah, like what, how do you approach it? And that's also an interesting, it's, it's not quite a TED talk, it's a little bit longer, it's 45 minutes, but it still gives you ideas on how to actually uh, focus, uh, voila. And that's what I wanted to um, uh, share. Maria just said, indeed, we have the ID Kitchen podcast, so in the same series, but that is more for, um, how to get other people on board. Yeah, you're not the only cook in the kitchen. There's other people that you will need to make inclusion and diversity a reality. So how do you get them on board? And it's it's really interesting podcast, uh, having interviews with uh, the IT person in your office maybe. Yeah, how can he or she uh, support your work on inclusion and diversity or the receptionist or uh, the parents of your uh, uh, target group Etc. Etc. So uh, that's another one. Thank you for sharing, uh, Maria. Voila, and maybe you have many others that you can share with us as well. And that's then for the next part with question and answers. And I hand back to Anna. Thank you very very much. It's indeed extremely interesting. Uh, we have got enormous amount of reactions and questions and comments in our chat. I would just uh, maybe remind our first time audience that every ID talk is then followed up by a short article on the same topic. And I think we could put all these useful links also as part of the article in its uh, footnotes. So you could 
still come back to these links, check them out, learn and, and change the practices towards more inclusive and more diverse ones. So uh, Maria, since you've been the one checking on chat the most, maybe you could bring to a speaker's attention a couple of questions from the chat before we go to breakout rooms. Yes, definitely. Thank you, Anna. And thank you, uh, Susie and Tony, for taking us on this journey and introducing this new tool, as some people said already in the chat, like Angelica and Daniel, that it's very cool tool. Uh, Noor said it's perfect. And then Aga uh, had a question that I think, Tony, you tried to answer already quickly in the chat. It's, uh, did we consider already publishing the document and a roadmap in electronic form, uh, different than um, the PDF? as uh, the PDF on Kindle, apparently it's very hard to read. And especially if there is a lot of design. So yeah, that's, uh, yeah. that's one. Yeah, the interactive PDF by its um, setup um, is best viewed with uh, Adobe Reader, but it's a free reader, so you can uh, download it on any PC. It's, it's easier to play with indeed on a, a computer rather than a small phone or a Kindle or other uh, devices. However, there is the uh, static or the print versions, as we call them, where you have everything uh, condensed uh, together. So that might be the alternative then uh, for still having access uh, to it. Uh, yeah. Thank Why you, not? Tony. Andreas uh, had a comment and a question. Great interactive map. Just maybe it should be enriched with indicators like quantitative and qualitative, maybe. Mm -hmm. Any comments to that? Um, if you click through to the actions, indeed, there's already more uh, detail. Uh, maybe it's not necessarily indicators, but it also has a list of outcomes. So if you work on it, this is what we are looking for, or this is what is the hoped uh, outcome. Uh, so that's def definitely something that you could uh, use. Or if uh, you really are in, 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 in a planning phase and you need to um, have indicators for uh, funding or whatever, you could add them in the text boxes next to the, the different actions so that for yourself you create more very specific uh, indicators like, okay, we want to reach out to new target group and these are the target groups or to at least so many uh, new young people with fewer opportunities. So that is up to you then uh, for your organizational work to, to add. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Katrine said, great, great tool, but is it going to be available in other languages? Yeah, for the moment, we've only foreseen it in English, because that tends to be the language on the European level, since most of the people use this European program. So then yeah, our assumption is a little bit that uh, there is basic knowledge of uh, English. Of course, we are very aware that not everybody speaks it um, uh, very fluently or very well. But um, I think, looking at Susie, that we try to keep it as straightforward as possible so it should not have very long those european program sentences etc so uh, uh but yeah feedback on that is uh, definitely welcome uh, if it's easy to use or too complicated thank you and uh, there was one question now just about if we could compile the list of all the links and the resources that have been uh, shared in the chat and i just uh, posted now in the chat that actually they're, they will be included in the article that Susie and Tony are going to write after this. So like you're patient in maximum 10 days time, <laughs> you should have them. But also I have just shared the link to the Google Drive where you can find the today's presentation and a lot of links are already uh, in there. And if you go to the Salto um, Inclusion and Diversity web page, you will find most of the things there. I will share the general Salto link uh, now again. Thank you. Anna, back to you. Yeah, thank you, Maria. And thank you for reminding about it. About 10 days after the ID talk, we are sending all the materials, the recording, the article, and everything in a follow up email to everybody who is here today. So that's something that is coming. But also, thank you very much for sharing your resources in the chat and bringing new ideas because we are also passing this um, chat content to our speakers that can enrich their article and also their knowledge of other existing practices and possibly um, yeah, reflecting them in other instances in our documentation. So thank you very much and please be 
uh, active. If you have more things to share with us and our speakers, uh, use the chat now. So um, how we will proceed? Because we are quite a big group with not so many, it's not so much time left. I would like to uh, invite you to share the questions, comments, so we collect all of them from all the groups, and then we'll ask our speakers to address them uh, together. Yeah, so let's uh, go one by one. Maybe Zoom room number one would like to start. What is your one question, one comment that you have brought back to our speakers? Anybody from Zoom room number one? I think I can go. I don't know. I, I cannot see my partners. Uh, we were um, <clears throat> commenting uh, two things, two ideas. One if, uh, is what is uh, sometimes it's hard to to define non non fewer opportunities concept. So some participants are very clear, but not others. And the other idea that we got is that uh, sometimes these guidelines is not helping with some structural uh, issues. Yeah, thank you very much. So um, if you could make a note on it, Tony and Susie, and uh, then we come back to it after all the questions, comments are, are voiced. Uh, Zoom room number two, what have you brought back from your discussion? If you're not sure about your room number, just go ahead, somebody. Um, I think that we were number two. I don't know. I can go if Please, you want. Andrea, please. Uh, thank you. Actually, we talked a bit about uh, the different tools that we have and um, that can help us. And in the end, we also reached a point that was quite common for everyone. It's more uh, like a comment and a recommendation of another question that uh, maybe we would need also to work again a bit more financing the the position of the sending organization because we thought that we just thought that the, the sending organization really um, uh, lost his like importance in these years and we think that to really address inclusion and diversity we should uh, work again more on that because it's the sending organization who does the real job on the fewer opportunities participants instead of the hosting organization so by maybe financing uh, i don't know professional positions in the organization during a project or again putting more like money on the sending costs that would help maybe organization and would give them time uh, to work more on the selection, on the follow-up activities, and that's it, yeah, that's our point. Thank you. Thank you very much, Andrea. Um, very good points indeed. Uh, group number three, what was your question or comment, please? Mm, I was in group number three together with Anna. I don't see Anna. And uh, there was a lady from Armenia and then a lady from Spain. And we would like again to because the roadmap tool was very interesting and was introduced to us first time. And we would like to have more information. And maybe we thought that if we study all this stuff you have given to us, we can be better students. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Indeed, it's a lot of information and a lot yes. of content for just a short half an hour introduction. But definitely we will send more um, all the links to you as a follow up. And uh, also the contacts of uh, our speakers are there in. So if you have some immediate reactions, questions, you can always contact them afterwards as well. Um, group number four. Okay. If not, then we can go to room number five, group number five. I think it was our, I'm not sure if we were five or six, but uh, well, no, one of the elements of the roadmap was uh, visibility. So what we decided is um, to actually make it a bit more visible and uh, talk about uh, one of the groups uh, that normally are very excluded and are not very much uh, talked uh, about in the international programs. And uh, we are talking here about the aesthetic violence, for example, fatphobia. 
there is uh, a lot of challenges, a lot of challenges with young people, um, especially right now with the social media, it's uh, getting even worse. And I don't know, I have not seen a lot in the European programs about it. And I think it's uh, interesting to comment here so we can uh, get aware. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you very much, Aga. I don't know what our speakers will have to say about it, but also we have one of, in one of our uh, talks of last uh, season, we talked about gender and body. And we talked a bit about aesthetics and, and uh, bullying. And maybe if you check out later the ID Talks magazine, you can also find the link to that ID Talk. It brings, sheds a little bit of light on this very important topic that you are raising. Uh, am I missing another room, room number six? Does everybody, did everybody have uh, an opportunity to bring their comments and questions to our attention? Okay, for now it seems that we could go uh, on with the uh, answers, uh, with reactions from our speakers. If you still have a question, you can write it in the chat, even if we don't have time to address all of those, we will pass them to our speakers to maybe elaborate on them in the article. So Tony, Susie, you have the floor. Shall I start, Susie? Yeah, good. Um, two things that you said, uh, the complaint about sending organizations that they don't uh, get the recognition financially, uh, as much as they deserve, because they're working and doing lots of uh, support work with young people with fewer opportunities. And then the other issue about uh, fat phobia, body image, uh, gender, etc. I think those are two perfect things that fit in the roadmap or how you could use the roadmap. So see where what actions you can do from the roadmap to um, uh, change it. Yeah. And then probably for the sending organizations that they don't get enough money, then you're on the level of uh, this um, uh, more accessible program design and tools. Okay, you maybe cannot change it, but you can lobby, yeah, to let the people know in the European Commission um, or via Salto, etc. Like, hey, this is really an issue, yeah. And there has already been um, a lot more flexibility in uh, funding for the extra support that uh, most of you are giving to uh, young people with fewer opportunities. Uh, the same thing about uh, fat phobia, et cetera, that could also be, or you could use the ID roadmap to make it more uh, visible, yeah? Um, and how to do that? There's different um, paths you can take in, in the roadmap uh, to work together with other organizations that maybe have similar, um, um, I would say, aims or, or objectives. Um, uh, indeed to your own upskilling if that's your uh, expertise in your organization okay organize a training course for other youth workers maybe and that's how you can actually use the the id roadmap to to find where you can make the difference that you're actually looking for you know? um i don't know susie do you want to add something yeah i wanted to say a couple of other things so related to the um the funding for the sending organizations i've heard that from quite a few people quite a few times in quite a few places um, um to be able to reach the more vulnerable the more disaffected the more disadvantaged young people um uh, marginalized uh, there needs to be support and there needs to be uh, funding and resources for that support um and it links just as Tony said that it links back to this kind of stakeholders working together approach and we hope that some of the items in the roadmap would help um, spark some of those discussions um, not everything in the world is in that in that document um, but we hope it would start um, without going too much on the metaphor a path and a few steps um, in a direction that would bring people on board um, to start uh, to grow that conversation and to get um, momentum into into changing that so the idea is that um, for example, if you start to use the roadmap as a tool on a national level to bring a few different stakeholders together, and that um, 
request and need from the youth field is uh, made very explicit and very clear and is put into those meetings and and you can make links to it and you can say it's because of this reason and that reason and this reason and look it's it's really well explained it's not only about visibility it's also about this that and the other so hopefully it would give you some words it would give you some strategy it would give you direction and the the process of it would hopefully um give some concrete steps towards change the other element I wanted to say was related to this um, uh, connection with impact and strategies and impact and having this common ground bringing stakeholders together It's this kind of um, yeah working out what what you need as an organization or what your project international projects need and stuff and how things would be better but um, it's it's also this um, uh, connecting to others so um, not just like the national agency and the ministry in a kind of hierarchical way but perhaps also in the wider community and there were some comments I think on the chat and, and in the other thing as well about different players and different ways um, and if you're thinking about impact and kind of mapping communities it might be good to think not only kind of horizontally for lobbying things but also vertically wider um, so we would Opposite. encourage yes exactly Vertically yeah horizontal. i'm sorry i'm <laughs> getting the things around the wrong way um um yes um so the roadmap is one tool but the point that we made about connecting to other processes other tools other stakeholders um we would encourage you to think about how to use it in your in your panoply in your in your library of resources and options um I could talk for ages, but I'll, I'll shut up. Was there something else that we um, that you wanted to say? Maybe one thing about the uh, definition. So in, in the first group, you had some struggles with, uh, OK, who, who are we talking about? I think the definition as it is, is, is a quite uh, flexible tool, yeah? because it says like young people who are uh, at a disadvantage compared to their peers, because and then you have those uh, exclusion factors, yeah? whether it's because of educational um, achievement, uh, whether it's because economic or uh, whether you're in a, in a, a disadvantaged area, whether that's city or, or uh, isolated uh, uh, communities, etc. And the nice thing is that it really uh, covers then everyone that you think fits under it. But indeed, it needs some kind of professional judgment, like I suppose you all do in your daily work. Like, yes, is this person really worse off than the the, the usual uh, peers um in in your community um and if you well i suppose as a social worker youth worker you can uh judge that and then uh you can also uh justify that towards your national agency when you're doing a, an application so i i would play it like that that if you have the arguments why your group is really in need of extra support then yes national agencies usually are on your side so uh, no worries about that. Well, thank you very much. I think we could go on for another 90 minutes if we had the time, but our time is coming slowly to its end. And I can bet many of you have already forgotten about our BZB working in the background, Olaja, our graphic recorder that has been trying to capture all the amazing ideas that came from our speakers, but also from their interaction with the audience. Now I am very happy to pass you the floor, Olaja, share with us the magic. Thank you. Thank you very much. I hope you can hear me correctly. I will share my screen now with the first taster of today's talk. So hopefully you can see it. Can you give me a head, heads up? Yes, oh yeah, we, we can, can see, see it. it. Okay. Super. So of course, this is just uh, as usual, uh, a little taster of what we have been discovered today with uh, Susie and Tony. Thank you very much for, for all this introduction. And yeah, from the beginning, we were exploring a little bit, what is a strategy? How do we feel about a strategy or what feelings it, it awakens in, in us? And, and how sometimes it can be scary, but at the end of the day, it's just a step-by-step -step road. And it, it's a very specific uh, word to use today. And then we were talking also about the EU ID strategy and also wondering how we can apply it both in our kind of implemented in our local realities and also more focusing on the youth work level. And uh, as an answer to this, we got an introduction to the IDEA Roadmap that is a super comprehensive resource that is still in the beginning of, of the shining uh, stage. 
And yeah, Tony was sharing with us how it works, uh, in, in what way it is interactive and what are the different levels of it and how to use it as well. So here I just put a few of the examples of how it can be used by practitioners, organizations and, and different levels of the field. So yeah, we will get the, the full recording also completing with the reflections after the Q&A in, in a few days. So just wait for it. Every time I, I feel like this is perfect and you outshine yourself in the next edition, I cannot wait to see more. Um, as just uh, to, to remind you and our audience out there that every ID talk is followed up by an article and the video that we will put on YouTube. So please follow us on all possible social media channels. To our audience here on Zoom, we will be sending you a follow-up email in a week or 10 days with all the links, uh, recording, uh, article, so you can also uh, discover these resources and this topic further. And um, if you liked it very much today, probably we will be seeing you again in two weeks time. Our ID Talks, five, uh, uh, five episodes of it in this uh, season, this spring 2022, coming every second Wednesday at 1 p.m. Central European time. See you in two weeks time. Thank you very much for joining, for being here with us. And hopefully you learn something new that will apply in your work. Tony, Susie, big, big thanks. A lot of professionalism, one more time, and very nice slides. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.